You probably already know whether you're going to be buying this complete mystical records of Dr. John D or not. This is the paperback edition. I guess the hardcover edition came out about four years ago, something along those lines. I'm recording this in November of 2020. And it was in two volumes. I put in my order for them just as the last ones were selling out and my copy got lost in the post. And by the time I'd gone through all the process of uh, trying to find where it was and so on and so forth, about a month had passed and they'd all sold out and the price had increased about tenfold. So uh, <laughs> here I am a few years later with these reasonably handsome paperback editions. Obviously, I would rather have the hardcover editions, uh, which is why I'm going to get these rebound. There's a local company that I'm going to be using um, who will make nice leather covers for your paperbacks. And so I'm going to be doing that. Now, I'm aware that they won't fit anymore in, um, uh, in this slipcase. And it's quite a nice slipcase, actually, uh, with John Dee's family crest, which is described inside the first book. Um, uh, but uh, but that's okay, to be honest with you. I, I, I might very well just um, uh, repurpose this uh, this, uh, this slipcase, just uh, have it cut and expanded um, and, and, and rebound, just to be able to keep those nice crests. They're really, really nice. Okay, uh, let me show you the books. Actually, first of all, here's a, uh, a view of the spine of the, the back of the of the slipcase, right? Uh, here we go. It's, um, it's very nice. You can see the texture is is lovely. It's uh, it's paper, um, uh, but it's uh, like this textured paper uh, with yeah golden golden um, stamped inscription on there. All right. So here are the books. One, two, and three. And the first thing that I noticed was that they were actually damaged. Now this came um, completely sealed, right, in, in cellophane. And this third book was quite badly damaged, right, on the corner. Uh, I'll, I'll get to the inside of the books in a moment, okay? Um, I, I know that some people get very upset when I when I show you the quality of the books themselves. Um, and then the first book, yeah, is kind of bent all the way through uh, to the to the very back, which is kind of weird. Um, uh, the, yeah, the second one, I can't remember. Yeah, the second one's got similar creasing. I have no idea what's happened. You know, I've looked inside the box, nothing nothing wrong there, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it's clearly a production issue. Another thing is this kind of um, uh, mark down the side here. It looks like it's, I don't know, it seems like maybe it's been stuck to something and then been pulled apart. I have no idea that the whole thing is just um, uh, not super. And then there are these, um, yeah, I, maybe I can, sh yeah, you see these these kind of marks over here. Uh, they're all over, like it's, it's pock, the, the, the covers are completely pockmarked. Uh, it looks almost like like mold, but in fact, I think it's just where the, um, uh, the, the, the glaze has not uh, settled properly or maybe when they were, they were, yeah, you can really see it on this third one, eh? Um, yeah, they just were, were maybe packed before they were completely dry. I, I don't know. Anyway, you can you can see that in the light there. Okay, let's have a quick look at what you get inside. So <laughs> uh, it's quite, kind of nice that they've uh, done this. The, uh, the They're not end papers. It's just the first page because it's a, it's a paperback, of course, but they made it look like like uh, end papers, it's black and white, um, but it's quite a nice touch, I think. And here we get started with the first book. Obviously, I'm gonna I'm not going to show you uh, page by page the, the the whole thing, but let me show you the contents um, in uh, volume one. So each one of these is, uh, has got its own contents page, but they're all listed in the first volume. Um, the, uh, the, these, 
these introductions. I was not expecting to be as entertained as I was by the uh, by the tables, the errata, the the bibliography, etc., etc. Uh, it, um, Kevin Kevin Klein, the, the the gentleman who's compiled and edited these books. Um, uh, clearly has a, a, a very nice sense of humour, and it's uh, it's all very readable. Um, well, at least <laughs> at least his part, the parts that he writes, are very readable. Um, and you know, uh, I suppose bearing this in mind, it's worth mentioning that he's made the parts written by John Dee as readable as they possibly can be. Uh, however, it's worth noting that. Uh, that uh, wherever Latin is written, there's th 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 there are no translations. Uh, there are other editions which he mentions, uh, which do offer translations. Uh, for example, for the first five books, the uh, the five books of mystery, um, it's uh, Joseph Peterson has got a very good translation. Uh, <laughs> I, I was interested to see the shade that he's. Um, uh, thrown on um, uh, Dr. Stephen Skinner's uh, translation of um, uh, the Latin in Merrick de Casobon's A True and Faithful Relation um, of What Came to Pass. I, I can't remember the proper, <laughs> the proper title of it. Um, uh, for some years between Dr. John Dee and some spirits, something along those lines, um, uh, which, of course, Dr. Skinner has translated and has made um, much more readable, but um, uh, yeah, Kevin Klein is clearly not very impressed with Dr. Skinner's uh, efforts at translation and um, uh, suggests that there may be some um, misleading uh, uh, aspects to that. Uh, so yeah, l l let me not um, uh, dwell too too long on that introduction, which you'll be able to read for yourself when you get the book, of course. Um, but then the, the errata um, are... Very interesting. He's uh, clearly been through every single line of the of these um, um, uh, manuscripts, uh, transliterated them as you can see, so that they are readable for us. Um, every, every every part is. Um, <sighs> all of the sorry, all of the notes by John D are all there in the in the margin in their original form, and you can see that wherever the page, the original page, has be, uh, has been damaged, uh, then the missing part is uh, covered in grey. Where the words have been able to be um, worked out, then uh, then. They've been added, but where it's not been obvious what should be written there, they've been just replaced with, with some some dots like that. Right. Um, in some parts, so as soon as you get into the um, into the better known books, uh, such as yeah the, uh, the 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 books number six and uh, and beyond, then uh, the parts that have been lost like this uh, have later records or later um uh, copy uh, have la later been copied out so it's been possible to work out what was originally written there i think it's really nice that uh, he's kept the original spelling although he says that he has tra he has um, because the letter u only became uh, the norm over the past couple of hundred years um uh, before it, everything was just a v he's he's uh, uh, yeah, uh, change all the V's that should be used into the letter U just to be able to um, make it all a lot more readable. Um, uh, it, with regards to, you know, whether the particular aspect of Dr. D's Enochian magic that you're looking for is in here, yes, uh, whatever it is you're looking for is in here uh, in its original context. Um, if you're looking for the... Um, uh, you know whether you're looking for the the table of the art or the sigillum de a meth right there um or the uh f the 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 thirty ethers or the forty eight um, uh, um angelic calls and so on and so forth that it, it's it's 
it's all somewhere in here. Okay, now I have not read all three of them. I received this um, uh, collection just last week and obviously once again I wanted to show it to you so that you got an idea of whether you wanted to um, uh, to, to get it or not uh, based on what you saw here before it runs out of print because once again I think um, this would be a, 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 a between five and ten years of study <laughs> to be able to give you a, a really good uh, introduction to, to what all of this is. So this is the second book. Um, <laughs> there we go. Here are the contents. Okay, and there's your illustrations and tables. I'll, um, I'll show you very um, briefly the the appendices from book three, which are really nice. Um, there we go. So yeah, you, you'll you want to be at least, may, may, maybe not proficient, but at least familiar with Latin. Uh, you, you'll certainly get a lot more out of this if you are. Um, and I would say that if you're not, uh, it's it's not impossible that you might get more out of simply Lon Milo Duquette's Inokian vision magic, you know, if you want it all pre-digested for you, okay? Um, this this is not for the magician who wants an introduction to John Dee, by, by no means. Um, uh, this is uh, if you already know quite a bit and you want the original manuscripts, Right, because that's that's what this is the original manuscripts with some some really nice notes and some really nice um, uh, introductions and uh, and yeah and appendices as I'm about to show you in book number three so um, book number three yeah it's got a got a few tables um, ta -ta -ta -ta, moving to let me just find the end here yeah well, there's a there's, there's quite a lot. This was really nice, a very nice addition, um, uh, which which he announces actually in his introduction. Um, the selection of interesting quotations, which will be of interest of, for uh, uh, anyone, even the casual reader. Uh, so these are basically highlights uh, from from inside. Um, if if you're if you're vaguely interested, then uh, this this will grab your attention, no doubt. Some some very curious interactions with some angels here. Uh, there's complete angelic lexicon. Uh, so all the words, all the Enochian words, with their um, translations and contexts, and where they might be found, also. Uh, da -da -da. There's there's a, there's a nice map of his travels as well. Let me see if I can find that list of spiritual creatures. I was interested to see that um, already uh, in John Dee's time, uh, he was at, attributing the four angels, um, Raphael, Michael, uh, Gabriel and Uriel as the four um, directional angels, or at least the four elemental angels. Uh, so uh, regardless of whether it uh, was that convention even earlier than that, it was at least um, in the 16th century. So that was a, an interesting thing to, to know. Um, what am I? Here we go. I'm looking for the, uh, the, the, the various keys. The um, is it the forty forty eight keys? Probably not. I'm probably getting this wrong. Twelfth key. Oh, I see they they're going backwards. Um, an examination of John Dee's forty eight clavis angelicae. There we go. So it's just, um, uh, yeah, what's already in here just made even more clear uh, and, and tabularized for your convenience. We are a list of um, uh, people that he mentions. Uh, 
This is a list of, um, yeah, I'm not sure what gazetteer means actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, here we are, D's European journey. There, with an interesting map there of all the places where uh, John D spent some time during his travels. So there we go. It's um, yeah. I mean, giving you an idea of the the last few pages of uh, of the third book here. Uh, you probably know that John Dee was a consummate uh, cryptographer. Um, uh, some some say that uh, maybe that was in fact the whole purpose of uh, of all of this. And well, if that's your belief and you're curious about what uh, the the, the code might be, then I suppose this is your chance to, to, <laughs> to work on that and try to, to work out what it all is, of course. Um, yes, uh, you know, how, how to read his tables and so on and so forth. The, the, the guy was, was um, <laughs> uh, he was something else. <laughs> there we are. It's um, it's complete, and I think that's all I can really say. It's um, it's fascinating, and yeah, it would be it would be the study of a of a of a good decade to be able to to say anything uh, of any worth about it uh, that hasn't already been said. So uh, thank you very very much, Kevin Klein, for this um, uh, for, for for bringing this to the to the world, right to. Um, for, for making all of this uh, fascinating work accessible uh, to us. And um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's my review, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and to subscribe down below if you haven't done so already. I hope the review has been interesting at least. Um, and it's given you an idea of whether you might want to pick this up for yourself. Take care and see you very soon. Bye-bye.